Hey, welcome everybody. In this video, we'll explore Coolify, an open source and self-hostable Heroku Netlify virtual alternative. Coolify enables you to launch static websites, APIs, backends, databases, services, and other types of applications. In this video, I'll guide you through the process of selecting and creating a virtual private server, installing Coolify, and setting up a Next.js 14 website with a custom domain name, SSL, and continuous deployment. Hey, welcome everybody and let's get started. For today's video, I'm going to be using Hetzner Cloud in order to create the virtual private server to host Coolify on. And I do understand that Hetzner only has a handful of locations. As you can see, you have Germany, Finland and the USA. So if this doesn't suit your needs, you might want to look into another cloud provider such as DigitalOcean, AWS or maybe Google Cloud. In fairness, they were great. The only difference is pretty much the pricing and obviously some of them have more locations. Now I've already created a Hetzner account and I'm going to log in and close this tab. So here we are on the dashboard of Hetzner Cloud and from here you can either create a new project, for example, clients or personal, or you can choose the default one. I'm going to go with the default one and create a brand new server here and this server is going to be located in Germany I'm going to choose Ubuntu 24.04 from here we can choose either a shared virtual CPU or dedicated one so if you have low to medium CPU usage you can go with this one here great for medium traffic website and if you have a high traffic application or applications you can go for the dedicated one which is obviously going to be a little bit more expensive now for the shared one I'm going to go down and let's have a look at the options now for the minimum qualify requires two CPUs to gigabytes of RAM and I believe 30 plus gigabytes of SSD. So this will be the absolute minimum to run Qualify. But if you want to have a couple of more projects, you're obviously going to have to go with a little bit more expensive option. So for example, I actually tested this one here for the past month and it's been great. On this one, I had three small websites and it was running absolutely fine. But obviously, if you're going to be adding more websites, consider grabbing a bigger one. And if you go to the Coolify.io website and go to self-hosted and get started from the installation self-hosted, you'll be able to see some of the requirements in here, as I mentioned. And from here, you'll be able to see some examples. Here is we have eight gigabytes of memory, four CPUs and 150 gigabytes of disk, which is able to run three Node.js projects, four static websites, plausible, some feedback tool, uptime karma, ghost, three Redis databases, and two PostgreSQL databases. Now, and let's go back. I'm going to select this one here and continue. If you scroll down a little bit more, you have networking and under networking, you have IPv4 selected and IPv6 selected, which I'm going to leave on. Scroll down a little bit more. And here we have the SSH key. So SSH keys will allow us to SSH to the server via the terminal and install Coolify. The best way of doing this is to create a new SSH key, which I'm going to show you how to do that. And the not great way of doing it is to actually leave this empty and they will send you a root password via email, which you can use. But this is a little bit more dangerous because people can brute force to try to basically guess your password. Now let's create an SSH key super quickly. So click add SSH. And then from here, we need to create our SSH key. Now, whether you're using Windows, Linux or Mac, you should have a folder called .ssh somewhere on your computer. I am on Windows and this is located under my PC, C drive, users, range, and then .ssh. This is where your public keys are stored. Find the one on your machine and then I'm going to show you how we can create one. So on Windows, we can open the terminal from here, left shift, right click, and then open in terminal. I'm going to zoom in quite a bit just so you can see and essentially this cds to the folder of ssh here and we can run the command inside this folder so ssh and then key gen like so and press enter for the name i'm going to leave it as the default id underscore rsa and press enter press enter two more times and then this should create a public file for us in here if you open this public file in any text editor i guess and copy this go back to Hetzner and paste the SSH key in here and this should fill the name for your PC as well and you can choose set as default key. Add SSH key and we're good to go. Let's scroll down a little bit more 
and we're going to look into the firewall a little bit later on. Backups are very important because I'm going to be deleting this. Obviously, I'm not going to uh, add them now, but when I recreate this for my own purpose, I'm definitely going to be adding backups. And this does add a little bit of cost to your server. So 20%, as you can see here, you add a little bit more. It's only €1.69 per month on this particular server. So let's untick this and everything else is looking good. The last thing that I'm going to do is just change the name. So maybe qualify. It doesn't really matter. Just call your server whatever you like and then click create and buy now. Okay, this is going to take some time to provision and I believe that they've actually given me the same public IP, which is pretty cool. Now, if you click on the Qualify instance here, uh, once it's provisioned and everything is running, we should be able to connect to it via this IP address in here. So I'm going to copy the IP and go back to my PowerShell. You can open the PowerShell pretty much anywhere on your PC. It doesn't really matter. Let's clear this and let's do SSH and then space and then root is the username of our server and then add and then we paste the server IP by doing right click. So press enter and from here it says are you sure you want to continue connecting and you just need to type yes and press enter. Hopefully you should be seeing welcome to Ubuntu here and all of this. So you can see the memory usage and so on. Great. Now that we SSH to a server, we can install Qualify. In order to do this, we can go back to the browser, go back to Qualify under installation, self-hosted at the top. Here we can copy the installation URL. So I'm going to copy it and let's go back to our terminal and paste it doing right click, right click. Whoops. So copy this, go back to the terminal and right click to paste it. Press enter. And this should take some time to install and I'm probably going to speed up the video here. So we have congratulations, your qualifying instance is ready to use and you can visit this URL. Basically is your IP address plus the port number of 8000. So I'm going to copy this, go to the browser and paste it. As you can see, we have qualify and now we need to create an account. For name, I'm going to go with Ruddy. Email hello at ruddy.co.uk and I'm going to put a password. Choose a strong password and then register. Obviously, make sure that you save your password so you can log in later on. So register and welcome to Qualify. Click get started next. And since we're installing this locally, we're not going to do the remote server here. Click on localhost. And now let's create a new project and let's do it. Our Qualify instance is now running, as you can see. I've zoomed in quite a bit just so you can see and I've put Qualify to be full width. And the first thing that I would suggest you doing is going to profile and then put in the two-factor authentication on because you don't want somebody to be uh, trying to hack you. Of course, I'm going to be deleting this instance after I finish with the video, so I'm not going to go through this. The next thing that I want to set up is a custom domain name for Qualify Instant. So if you go to settings and then from here, you can actually change your instance domain name. So from the IP to a custom domain name, I'm going to use one that I already have. So HTTPS and then column slash slash ruddy.lol and this is the domain name that I'm going to be using. Now before I save it, this is probably not going to work because I also need to point my domain name to the Qualify instance here on this IP address. So I'm going to grab the IP address and I'm going to open my domain name provider which in this case happens to be Porkburn. Uh, they do have cheap domain names but I don't personally like the UI that much. Anyways, find the domain name that you want to change and obviously this will work on any domain name register. It will be exactly the same. Just the user interface will be slightly different. So from here, click on DNS. So find your DNS records. And in this one, I don't have any DNS records just yet. But what I need to do is set up an A record from here. And then the first host is going to be empty. And the answer is going to be the IP of the server only the ip like so and then click add the next record that we need to set up is going to be again an a record but this time i want to add a wildcard so in order to do this you put asterisk and this is going to make asterisk.ruddy.low this is going to allow qualify later on to create a subdomain names for us for example for example analytics.ruddy.lol or nextjs.ruddy.lol and so on. So this is what's going to do. And the answer is going to be again, the IP of the server. Click add and you should be good to go. Sometimes the DNS records do take a little while to propagate, but uh, with Portburn, they are normally fairly quick. And if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see both of the records inside here. Let's go back to Qualify. Let's try to click save. And if everything is working, 
well, if your domain name is pointing correctly, you should see success. From here, there are a couple of things that you might want to consider doing. And the first thing is maybe remove the auto update. I only want to update my qualifying instance when I have a backup. So if I backup my whole virtual private server on Hetzner, then maybe I can do it manually. So I'm going to definitely untick this. And if you want to help out the qualify team, you, you can also leave this unticked. But if you don't want to be tracked, obviously you can tick it and so on. Now, this is all looking good. Uh, it's saved and all qualify instance should be accessible under this domain name. And let's check it out. So I went to rally.lol and then this leads me to the qualify. And I should be able to log in with my email and the password that I saved earlier. Let's do that and log in. Our instance is now working, but before we continue doing anything else, I want to restrict the access from the IP here and I want to set up some firewall rules on the actual virtual private server. So for this, let's go back to the Hetzner cloud, click on your instance and then click on firewall. From here, we can create a firewall and from here, we can add a couple of ports. Basically at the moment, as default, all the ports are open and that's why you can access your instance via this port in here. But um, but as soon as we start adding ports, they will get locked out. So the 22 is the SSH, the secure shell, but we need a couple of more. So I'm gonna add a new one and this one is gonna be 80. So this is the HTTP. Let's add another one. And the other one, it's going to be 443, which is the HTTPS. And also, if you want to expose some of your databases, I'm going to add another one. So for example, if you create a database on your Qualify instance and you want to access it uh, via application on your computer, then you might want to open this port as well. I'm going to open it for me. So 3306. And it's pretty cool how they got these icons. That's awesome. Anyways, from here, if you wish to, you can put labels and you can name your firewall, but I'm going to leave it as default and create the firewall. This should take a couple of minutes to do. And once this is done, when you go back to your qualifier under your IP here, you shouldn't be able to access anymore. So if I click enter, if I press enter, you should be able to see that this is spinning. It's going to, and it's going to fail in a second. So this is awesome, but, but we should be able to still access or qualify instance via the domain name that we added earlier. So if I refresh this, as you can see, this is working and this is still trying to access it, but yep, site cannot be reached, which is what we want. Awesome. Let's close this. Let's close Porkbun because we don't need it. And let's put this full width and maybe I can zoom a bit more. Okay. I think this is good. The next thing that I want to set up is the wildcard for our domain names. If you go to servers here, and then click on localhost. From here, you can add your wildcard domain name, which is gonna be already.lol. So https column slash slash ruddy.lol. And this is what's gonna allow us, well, allow Qualify to create subdomains for our projects, which is great. And I'm gonna show you this later on. Once you're done with this, make sure that you save it and click continue. Once this is saved, everything else should be good to go and we can go back to the dashboard. All right, now we are actually finally finished with the installation of Qualify and we can start by creating our first project. The project that I'm going to be creating today is going to use Next.js 14 and it's going to be a private project that I have on a private GitHub repository. Now, since it's a private GitHub repository, we need to allow Qualify to access that repository from our GitHub account. Go to sources and from here we need to add a new source. Click add and then you can name your source whatever you like. I'm gonna name it, I'm actually gonna give it my website name so Qualify and then my website name which is Gear Explorer and then everything else should be fine. Click continue and then from here we need to change the webhook endpoint. This is important. Make sure that you change it to your domain name here and then we need to click register now. Okay, we have create GitHub app and click on the green button here to create it. This redirector is back to Qualify and now we need to click install repositories on GitHub. Okay, we have installed Qualify Gear Explorer. Scroll down a little bit and from here you can either allow all of your repositories from your GitHub account which is something that I wouldn't recommend. I'm normally trying to be a little bit more careful and I only select the repositories that I want qualified to access. So in this case, let's click only selected repositories and I'm going to search for my repository super quickly by selecting repositories. And if I search for my repository, as you can see, it's private. 
and I can select here, another repository is added and I can go down to the bottom and click install. Okay, we've been redirected back to Qualify and everything is looking good here. Just in case, make sure that you save this. So click save, success, GitHub app updated. Awesome. Everything is looking good. And now we can create our application. If you go to projects and from here, you can actually add multiple projects that you're working on. For example, maybe I can call this one Gear Explorer or personal projects or client projects, whatever. For me, I'm going to save a little bit of time and click on my first project here and then for the environment exactly the same thing you can have different environments such as uh, prediction development testing you know all that and for me i'm just gonna put mine in prediction and then we need to add a new resource click add new resource and then from here you have a lot of options you have some predefined applications here databases and a massive list of applications which is pretty cool now, in this case, uh, as you can see, you can use a public repository or you can use a private repository. In this case, I'm going to use the private one. So click on this and then we need to click on localhost, standalone, Docker. And then we have the GitHub application called Qualify Gear Explorer that I connected from sources. So let's click on this one. And then from here, you should be able to see your repository name and it should be only one. And then, and then we can click load repository. From here, since this is a Next.js project, we don't really need to touch anything else. I only have one main branch, but if you wish to change it, you can change it from here. The build pack is going to be this one here. We don't want to change this. This essentially is going to recognize what our project is built with and it's going to do the necessary steps in order to install it. The port stays 3000 as default and we should be good to go click continue and now our project is almost ready to deploy now before you deploy your project you obviously if it's a real project you might have a you might need to set up a couple of things first of all from here if you look at the domain names you can see that this has generated a random domain name which is pretty cool so qualify can generate random subdomain names where you can test your website or even you can or even you can just use this domain name for your actual website, which is awesome. Now, instead of using uh, this domain name, I'm actually gonna be adding a custom one. So I'm gonna remove this and add a custom one. So HTTPS and then co column slash slash and mine is called Gear Explorer, explorer.com. And I also want to add the www comma HTTPS column slash slash www.gearexplorer.com and we should be good to go do not press generate domain because this is gonna erase this and it's gonna put a random one so instead what you need to do is press save and that's it what we need to do is point this domain name to or qualify ip now this domain name for me is actually under cloudflare so i've already logged in and i've selected my domain name which is getexplorer.com and from here we need to go to the dns settings so i'm going to click on the drop down menu and then records if i scroll down a little bit you're actually going to see that i've already had these records added so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to delete them just so everybody can follow along let me delete this one and let me delete the other one and now we're clean Basically, we don't have any A records now and we can start. Okay, so first of all, let's grab all IP from the Hessner virtual private server. I'm going to copy it and then let's go back to the records from here. From here, let's add a new record and this record is going to be A record and it's going to use the at for root. So at, otherwise he probably won't let you add it. And then we need to put the IP. If you're having any problems with the proxies, you can disable them from here, but uh, this should work absolutely fine. So I'm gonna save this one. And I want to also add a www to my website as well. So I'm gonna add a new record. This is gonna be a type of A, and this is gonna be www. And as you can see, this adds it as www, and then my domain name, which is cool. We need to put the IP in here one more time and press save. Okay, once this is propagated and pointing to our qualifier instance, we should be good to go. But one more thing that I wanted to show you is that if you are using Cloudflare and you're having problems with the SSL TLS, you can go to SSL TLS in here, click on overview. And the one that worked for me is this one here. The full strict worked for me and I haven't had any problems, which I'm gonna show you in a second. So we should be good to go now. Let's close this or 
domain name is pointing to the virtual private server. We've got the domain name here, we've saved it and everything is great. Now, since this is a real project, I do have environment variables that I need to set. So let's go to environment variables. And from here, the easiest way to add them is by developer view. I'm going to click developer view and then literally you can po post yours in here. So just as a demo, your environment variables might look like this. So, so from your .env file, your environment variables might look like this. I've obviously blurred out my keys because I don't want to uh, miss something and not change it later on. But essentially this is specific to my project. And all you need to do is copy them and paste them in Kulifa. So I'm actually going to copy and paste the real ones, but hide them from you. So copy, paste, and I'm probably going to blur this and then click save. And you should be able to see a preview of your environment variables inside here as well. Um, maybe you need to click save one more time. I think this was done anyway. Anyways, now that all environment variables are added, what you can do is click on normal view and you should be able to see them from here. So I have a OAuth token, I have Flickr API, I have S3 bucket and so on. Now let's go back to general. If everything is looking good, we should be able to deploy our website. So let's click deploy and this could take roughly a minute in order to deploy. So I might have to speed up the video. Okay, it looks like we are done rolling update completed and it says that our project is running. So let's check it out. If I go to configuration, everything is looking good and let's open a private browser. So I'm going to open Edge and I'm going to open it in private. So let's visit the website, geexplorer.com. And this is the first time visiting the website, so it won't be cached yet. But as you can see, it loaded straight away. Let's accept this. And if I click on any of the other pages, this one was thinking about it. And if I click on another one, as you can see, it's actually fairly quick. So if I click on another one, yep. Uh, once it's loaded, it's actually, once it's cached, it's actually super quick. If I go between pages now, as you can see, it's mega quick. And yeah, it's awesome. Now, if anybody is interested, this is server-side rendered, but I do have client-side rendered page as well, somewhere I think compare, yep. So if I do Sony, this should pop up with results. And if I do Sigma, this should pop up with results. And now let's see how fast this is. This is an API from Next.js. And as you can see, it's mega fast, which is awesome. I'm not going to go through the project anymore. But one thing that I want to change is to redirect the www to non-www. If I put www in front of the website, this should also work. So the website, as you can see, it's also working, but I don't want my website to be working with www. So I want to be able to change this. Now, this was a little bit of a game to do, but I'm going to show you how I managed to do it. And hopefully that would also work for you. If we go back to Qualify and we are under the project here, let's scroll down a little bit more. Make sure that you obviously have your domain names in here, but scroll down a little bit more. And where we have container labels, we need to change a couple of things. This was a pain to do. It took me a while to figure out, but uh, I finally cracked it, I think. So let's give it a go. As default, Coolify is using traffic. I believe this is how you pronounce it. And we need to change a couple of lines. So the first line, and maybe I can copy and paste the whole thing for you if you wish to, or you can just pause the video and copy and paste. The first thing that we need to change is under the gzip compress true, we need to add a couple of more lines in here. So I'm going to copy and paste them. But again, feel free to pause the video and then later on we'll remove the spacing by the way. And we also need to change two more things where we have middleware here. So I'm going to make some space as well. So where we have middleware redirect to HTTPS, we need to put comma and then redirect to non www. We also need to do this one more time. And the other time is here where we have HTTPS dash one and we have middlewares equals gzip. We need to put the same thing. So comma redirect to non www. And this is what worked for me. To, uh, now we need to clean this up. Don't put any spaces just in case. Okay. And we should be good to go. If I was to now go to the top here, and press save. It's very important to restart this, otherwise it won't apply. So let's click restart, and this should take a couple of seconds, maybe up to a minute. 
Okay, we have success. Obligation status has been updated. And now let's check out our website one more time. I'm going to go to a private browser one more time and we're under HTTPS with the www. Let's press enter. And as you can see, this redirected straight away, which is awesome. If you was cached for some reason, maybe close the browser and reopen it again. But as you can see, if I put www dot it redirects to my domain name and everything should be working as you can see go back and i think that's going to be everything from this tutorial i hope that you find it useful consider subscribing like this video and comment below